Disney is one of the most hated companies in the entertainment space, and they never really help themselves. It's not like they're creating content for the customers they already have. They're not really listening to our feedback, and while they constantly promise they're going to start focusing on quality over quantity, they haven't changed their ways. And now Disney has been forced to reveal unequal pay on the Star Wars show The Acolyte, which is absolutely hilarious. I have a few things to show off, but if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, Disney is a company that constantly boasts about their diversity and their inclusion and how they want to change the industry for the better, but it doesn't look like they're really doing that much because on their female-centric series, where most of the cast members, yes, are female, they have been forced to reveal unequal pay. This is a Forbes article that I primarily wanted to reference. It says documents filed by Disney have revealed that its latest Star Wars spin-off series, The Acolyte, isn't a force for equality, despite famously featuring a female-centric cast. It's always the ones that speak the loudest, who have something to hide. Disney constantly boasts about how they want to change for the better and how they promote diversity and inclusion. But now we see that, of course, yet again, they are not a force for equality. It says, according to the filings, in early April last year, when production of the streaming service was still in full swing, just 30% of the 695 employees are women, and across the entire workforce, women's average hourly pay was 19.4% lower than men's. Said around 100 years before the events of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, the Acolyte sees a former Jedi apprentice reuniting with her master to investigate a series of crimes. Well, apparently, Disney needs to be investigated for some of their crimes because they are definitely not a group of good individuals. I mean, we've been saying this since we knew Amanda Stenberg and, um, of course... Leslie Headland were put on this show because Ledley, Leslie Headland was the former assistant of Harvey Weinstein. You're not going to convince me she didn't know what he was doing. And uh, of course, how did she magically get to work at Disney, one of the largest entertainment companies without really any resume. She'd made two shows in the past, and while one of them was a massive fan favorite and a mega hit, uh, Russian Doll, the other really wasn't. And by those two alone, we're not talking about someone who should be put on a Star Wars project. She knows nothing about Star Wars. And then, of course, Amanda Senberg, an actress who was in The Hunger Games, whose, of course, parents are rich and probably got her this role because she really also hadn't been in much else. And keep in mind, in The Hunger Games, she was in two scenes, maybe three, because she played Rue, um, who, spoiler alert, dies relatively early into the games, but at the end of the day, we're not talking about a group of people who are individuals who really know about Star Wars or the universe that they were stepping foot into. And of course, the Acolyte alone, without this controversy, was already a disaster for them. I mean, just taking a peek on Rotten Tomatoes, 85% critics, so it's gone up just a little bit and it doesn't deserve anywhere near that, but a 13% audience score with over 25 thousand ratings lowest piece of star wars content in history absolutely hilarious to see but that right there just the content itself is a controversy never mind um disney being you know called out for their absolute hypocrisy now i think it's funny because they could do nothing that would surprise me at this point most of the higher-ups are genuinely terrible people and you know don't warrant any sort of support at all whatsoever, but also keep in mind that just last year, Disney was sued by 9,000 women who were alleging an illegal gender pay gap. So this is just a continuation of this because, of course, um, you know, investigations are going on. This you know, certified class action lawsuit is happening. As it says, confirmed by a judge, a certified class action lawsuit that claims and alleges that Disney underpaid 9,000 women in comparison to their male counterparts is officially in effect detailing the illegal gender pay gap. So again, this is just a continuation of it, but at the same time, 
It just doesn't look good for Disney. And they could be sued to oblivion. Disney could cease to exist tomorrow, and I personally wouldn't care. While I love some of the franchises they have, like I've loved Marvel in the past, I don't anymore. While I loved Star Wars, I don't anymore. Um, And it would be cool if Disney magically wasn't affiliated with these franchises anymore and you actually had people who understood the franchises at the helm again. I wouldn't really care if they faded into oblivion at this point, and I think most people would agree. While we did previously love Marvel and Star Wars, it's just not the same anymore, and they are only putting out really, really bad content. But of course, ever since this information came out about Disney, people are roasting them on social media, calling them out, saying, patriarchy in a patriarchy smashing show, color me surprised. Could it be a question of demographics? In time women put into filmmakers' careers, not white oppressors. One would imagine a show preaching DEI also practiced it. Star Wars fans see you. Hashtag the acolyte. I mean, again, we're talking about a series that people are not watching and the people who are watching it are not rating positively. So I don't think we're going to get another female-centric Star Wars series, at least in the near future. The closest we're going to get is the Rey Skywalker movie where she probably smashes the patriarchy, um, and she's the lead character, of course, and it's going to inject more feminism into Star Wars, but I don't think that's going to really be female-centric. People are saying, lol, women paying women, let's go figure. Wow, Disney may preach about equality from here to the high heavens, but turns out they definitely don't practice it. And again, this doesn't really surprise me. They just are not good people at Disney, and they don't actually care about the people who really bring projects together like cameramen and, you know, the individuals who do the lighting work. Like, they have a slew of individuals that are not these super high-paid actresses and producers and directors, and they just don't care about really any of them. It says, Forbes article on the unequal pay on Disney Star Wars show The Acolyte, go figure. I mean, yeah, this just does not look good for Disney. And you even have some people who have previously supported Disney um, saying this is even a step too far for me to support. Now, of course, most of us do not support Disney actively anymore. We don't really give them our money anymore. They definitely don't deserve it because they're definitely not listening to us, but it will be interesting to see if Disney gets called out for anything else that is extremely fishy in the future. Wouldn't shock me. I'm sure that it wouldn't shock you, and it will be interesting to see how much more these scores continue to tank on Rotten Tomatoes for the Acolyte as again 25,000 ratings 13% is abysmal lowest rated piece of Star Wars content only time will tell but for now that's all that I really had to discuss in this video let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed this give it a like and if you didn't give it a dislike I appreciate your support either way but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.